So many people, when they think of the rivers, they think of going fishing or going boating. What we forget sometimes is how much product actually moves along the waterways. A lot of commerce comes up and down the river, barges uh, full of grains and oils, coal, salt. We don't think about the waterways because we don't drive on them, uh, but we do know the impact they have if they ever go down. Work at the Dresden uh, Lock and Dam. These locks haven't been repaired for 70 to 80 years. In some instances, we could dewater the chamber, and obviously that makes the work area much, much easier to work in. These locks were originally built in the 30s. They didn't have the ability to drop in bulkheads. We set in the floor mark later today, and then tomorrow morning we've got concrete scheduled for a sign. The end goal is to install a section of wall that will actually have a slot in it that will allow the core in the years to come to dewater this and do much more needed repairs. It's one of the first sites that I think we've done with the contractor that the majority of the work's all done underwater. I've worked with J.F. Brennan for, for many years, and what I've noticed is they've, they've, they've grown pretty quick, they've, they've taken a lot of challenges on, and they do it the right way. Right now, Brennan employs 75 divers. Each one of them are members of the UBC. We've got a lot of large cranes, a lot of large pieces that were going to be placed underwater. So we got the divers involved in the process. The Brennan reached out to Carpenter's Local 174 uh, several months in advance to discuss the scope of work. And that involved using computer-aided design and modeling what the diver was going to see. This gave them the chance to actually look at this project from the underwater world. There is no room for error. Uh, you don't get a second chance when they get down there. Our members have to do it right, and they have to do it right the first time. Working underwater is the most hazardous job that we have in the core. You don't get very much visibility down there. Most of, most of everything that we're working with is within six inches of our, of our view. You also don't have a great deal of uh, maneuverability. You're wearing a dive suit, you're wearing tools on your chest. There's a lot of things underwater that you don't know they're there until you actually get down there and feel them. And sometimes that's when you feel them, it's too late. The structures on which we work uh, are typically uh, 100 plus years old. A diver may find himself you know, working around crumbling structures, which creates safety hazards. You think about the level of discipline and training that goes in to be able to calmly go down, do what needs to be done, do it well, do it with accuracy. Uh, it's pretty impressive. When they submit their package for their work, regardless of the specs of work, we look at the training of the divers. We get a lot of guys coming right out of high school that go to the, 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 the deep sea diving schools, and they don't really have any skills, so they come to us, we get them into the union, get them into that apprenticeship program on the spot. The United Brotherhood of Carpenters uh, runs a training facility that's unparalleled in the industry. I've witnessed the apprenticeship training with my own eyes. I was blown away. So they're able to go and take forming classes and take concrete classes and take, you know, rebar. All, all, the, all the education that we need is provided to us through the UBC. When you're working concrete work and setting forms above water, I mean, that's a feat in itself. I mean, these guys are doing the same thing below surface. An hour of hard physical labor underwater is probably equivalent to four or more hours on surface. Preparation's huge for what we do. If you have two divers in the water, that means you have to have two tenders, which are topside help. Each diver tests his own equipment. The, the, the tender that he has working with him will, will test his equipment, check his equipment over. He'll check the diver over. Just before the diver gets in the water, this, this dive supervisor will come out and check that diver again. That umbilical that we wear is our lifeline. It's their air supply, it's their communications, it's their video, as well as, as, as any other instrumentation like how deep they are. We gotta be very conscious of uh, relaying information. We've got a crane that may be lowering heavy panels down to you in zero visibility. Having that communication, just like you do topside, you know, you take that stuff for granted. When you get the newer apprentice divers, you know there's a lot of apprehension. We, we dive in sewage plants and oils and things like that. And so you think of that kind of stuff and the ability to only see maybe a few feet around you, that would actually probably terrify the average person. It's a passion. It's, it's not for everybody. You know, you're, you're in a helmet, you can't see nothing. If you're claustrophobic, forget it. It's really impressive just to see all these people coming together with all these skill sets to get big things done.